Hi there, beautiful souls, and welcome, welcome back, or welcome to The Hawk and I. My name is Lana Zielinski, and I work in the spirit dimensions. As always in all my videos, simply take what resonates, what doesn't resonate, simply leave here. I'm talking today about an interesting pairing. I'm talking about the empath, and I'm talking about anxiety, and quite often, they go together. A little bit of a disclosure here, this is not medical advice. I am not a medical physician, and I am simply sharing with you some observations over the years um, with my clients, with myself, with some friends, anxiety, and the empath. So let's talk about um, the empath. I truly believe that every single one of us has some level of empathic qualities. Where on that level? may vary. Some of us are extremely sensitive feelers, maybe very, very high up. Some of us may be more in the middle and some of us may be a little bit more on the lower end. I also believe that we can go up and down on that scale, right? You know, depending on where we are in our own spiritual journey, um, there has been an increase in anxiety lately. <laughs> and part of my observation um, is there has also been an increase of spiritual growth. And with spiritual growth, the empathic scale goes up. When the empathic scale goes up, wherever you are on it, so if you were here and you start going up, you know, feeling things, in, quite often in comes the anxiety. And if you are already way at the top, the anxiety can raise even higher. We, we also don't teach this. I don't remember any time in my journey be, being taught in the school um, system what it is to be an empath why am I feeling things and how to manage the anxiety that comes in with it now there is a third party that does is also involved in this conversation and that is your intuition your intuition also peaks in there and I will talk about that um, in a few moments as well so empaths they're feelers big feelers. They have a heightened awareness to, to, to energy. They can feel things. They can, you know, they can, they can have a knowing. They literally right to the heart. Those are the people that are always, always in the heart space. And with the empath, they don't always understand why. They don't always understand why they're so sensitive and they resist it. They do, you know, and they're told, oh, you're too sensitive. You know, the empath also, you know, can be very overwhelmed and being crowds. The empath quite often is a over giver. They give and give and give until they have no more fuel in the gas tank and they, they burn out and they get exhausted very, very easily because of the amount of energy that they use to absorb and that the energy that they put out. Empaths are also very easily manipulated. So quite often the empath will find themselves in situations with other people that's not always great, right? Because they're so giving and so so open and so, you know, such a big feeler, they have trouble saying no. They get themselves into situations that may not be the healthiest for them and they, they may not be, be able to manage that. Empaths also tend to really enjoy solitude. They like their alone time. And empaths will quite often even say, it's just easier to be alone. It's easier not to go. You know, I feel better. The empath, even though they may have a ton of people around them that love them, they often have this this lonely echo within within them. They just feel a, a sense of loneliness quite often. Now there are many, many, many other traits with you know with being an empath. These are just a few of the most common. So, what can we do to manage all this? So you've got you've got the empath, you got the anxiety, and then you got the intuition that comes up and joins joins these two, and it becomes very difficult for many, 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 many empaths. And depending on where you are and where your spiritual growth is, you know, it, it's just a lot to navigate. So how I have helped so many people, um, students and clients and what I, what I have observed um, throughout the years and even myself, what I've observed with myself, with my own spiritual growth and the spiritual, we as a physical world, there has been a lot of growth. So we're seeing a lot more we're seeing a lot more anxiety, right? Because the more that we spiritually grow, up the scale we go because, you know, we feel things and then comes the anxiety. So part of the increase in anxiety is there, yeah, I, and I truly feel this, part of the increase in the anxiety is that we are growing collectively as a spiritual community. That's just part of it. It's not the only reason why we have more anxiety, but it's part of it. Now, 
what do I do and what do I say to my to my with my clients and my students or myself when I'm feeling things off the charts or even in the middle where it's unbearable or hard to manage and I don't want to go out in crowds and I don't want to go here and I don't want to go there. What can we do about that? Most empaths absorb. They literally suck in the energy. They feel it deep. They take it on. They, they, that energy literally embeds in them. So it, it's a heavy, it can be a heavy feeling. Now let's just do a little bit of an example here, okay? Let's say you come over and we're gonna, I'm having a hard time. Can you come on over? I'm really having a hard time. And I'm telling you a story of, of what I'm experiencing. And the empath, like a sponge, will absorb it. So I like to take that point to help people with saying, okay, you're absorbing something that's not yours. So when you're feeling this energy and this anxiety, and this may happen hours after you've been with me, right? Or after after being with a person who's who's struggling or hours after being in a crowd, or it can be immediately. One thing I like to do is I like to pause and say, okay, mine or not mine? Is this, is this my feelings? Is this, how, is this me? Um, am, am I feeling sad, fearful, angry, agitated? Uh, you know, it, no, it's not mine. Mine, not mine. Step number one. When we can start to observe rather than be that absorbent sponge, we're still able to help people. We're still able to hold the space. We're still able to be that great listener. We're still able to partake in being, you know, a healer. What, whatever, whatever is on your path that you're experiencing, if you don't absorb and you practice observing, practice observing, literally, to, you know, take a look at an item and just practice looking at it. Practice that a couple times a day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at it. I'm, gonna I'm not going to absorb the energy or take it in. I'm going to work on observing. As the observer, you're able to help people even more because you're not taking on the energy and you're not layering in the anxiety. And then your intuition has a clear, has a clear shot to come in and, and help you with whatever it is that you're helping somebody navigate in. Okay, so that, that, is, that is the first practice not absorbing. Now, I think that, in myself included, there are times I do absorb. I, I, I can feel that energy deep into my core. I can feel, I can feel it, right? So what, what do I do? I wring out the sponge, right? If I've absorbed something, I got to wring it out. So what resonates with you? I'll give you some tips. Create your own or take mine. It's totally up to you. You know, you may so soak in a salt water bath. You may, you know, just have a shower. You may, you know, find grounding exercises help you. Walking bare feet on the grass, hugging a tree, counting the stars, you know, sitting with the sunset, being able to wring it out. You can simply give it back to the universe, right? This is with love, with love. Another thing that really helps is if you're, if you have a knowing that you're going to either go somewhere with a big crowd or, you know, you're going to be in a, you know, in a situation where you may absorb what I will often do is I will put a filter. I will put a, I will simply say, visualize, set an intention, whatever wording you want to use. I'm going to go and see so-and-so today and I'm just going to wrap them in a beautiful blanket of love and light. Just hold them in love and light. Let the blanket absorb the energy so that I'm not personally taking it on, right? You, whatever you can you, comes to your mind that you want to use as a filter, always put love and light to be able to filter it so that you're not the one being the filter. You're not absorbing it. I always work in love and light. That's just, it, you know, if I'm going to help somebody, it's got to be in love and light. Try that. Now, let's talk about the anxiety. Anxiety is a very natural reaction. It's our fight or flight. We have all experienced different levels of anxiety at some point in our journey. Some people experience anxiety very, very high. Some of us are very, very low. No matter where we are on that grid, what really helps, or that scale, sorry, what has really helped so many of my clients is to talk to it. The anxiety is something I'm experiencing. I am not anxiety. I'm, I am having a moment, I'm experiencing it, but I want to talk to it. I want to visualize it. This is my anxiety and I'm going to have a chat, right? I'm, I'm going to remind myself that it's an experience and that I'm not holding it so that I'm also not absorbing with that sponge, wringing it out. I'm going to visualize it outside of me. When I visualize it outside of me, it, it truly, it, you know, and give this a try, right? It truly helps not 
to personalize the anxiety as who I am. It's an experience. Look at it this way. I know it's very simple and very different. I'm, I'm going to acknowledge that. But you know when you're really, really angry and the angry passes? The angry passes because you 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 let it go. It, you know, you were able to look at it from here. Rather it be a new perspective. Rather it be, you know, um, you wrung out the, the, the anger. The situation settled down. Try and do something very similar where you can talk to the anxiety. We fight these things. Like we fight, we fight it, we fight it, we fight it. If we can, outside of myself, acknowledge it. Most times with anxiety, it wants to be acknowledged. It, it uh, How many times have you had anxiety in this, the moment somebody else acknowledged it or you acknowledged it, it seemed to quiet down. The other thing that I want to talk about is the intuition. So highly sensitive people, empaths, are very intuitive. So many, so many students have taken just, you know, one day workshops with me uh, on mindfulness, on anxiety, on, on the empath. And they, once they start to understand that, there is suddenly like this paved way, uh, paved way for the intuition to slide right in. And these people, so many, I'm talking like so many people um, that have crossed my journey have, you know, suddenly said, Lana, I've, met, I've, I've, I've been able to ring out. I've been able to talk to the anxiety and now I've got my this intuition that's coming in and it's glorious and it's helping me and it's helping other people. Now, not everybody goes off to, you know, to become, you know, a medium or work, work this way, but they use their intuition to help them in life because they can hear it and get clarity a lot easier. That ringing out practice that I talked about is also very helpful in so many things. Just think about, if I can just ring that out, if I can, some of my students I've, I've, I've suggested Cut a piece of a sponge and keep it in your pocket. If you know you're going to be in a situation that's going to be difficult or that or you're you're going to absorb, keep a little sponge in your pocket and reach for it every now and again so the sponge can absorb it. We absorb things rather than just observe things. And I'll tell you from my experience, I was able to help people at a deeper level when I wasn't absorbing it all all the time. I do hope that uh, this little video... Um, perhaps, you know, Sean, a little bit of, a little bit of light into, um, why you feel so deeply and why the anxiety comes with it. And a few little tips to perhaps help you get playful with it, make it your own, try new things. It, you know, it's, it's about being able to create a space where you can manage these things it may not never go away. Right. You know, there are still every now and again, my anxiety will peak up. It may not, it may not hundred percent ever go away. But if you can have a deeper understanding and manage it, that whole self-love piece will also increase. You will start to love yourself a little bit more. You will start to find a little bit more joy. You will have a deeper understanding of the amazing, amazing human that you are. As always, I'm wishing you love, light, blessings, and have a spirit-guided day. Take care.